Hi, my name is Glory. I'm a second year student studying at the Bartlett School of Architecture in London, originally from Hong Kong. And I'm Yan Shan, a second year architecture student, and I'm into musicals, oil painting, movies, and embarrassingly into self help and Richie Biscuits. You are listening to Designing Thoughts with the Archie Gals, a podcast where we talk about working and creativity, living well, the human condition with relationships, and life experiences. Before we get into the podcast, I would just like to ask for a small favor. It would mean a lot to us if you could leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or leave a comment on our YouTube channel just to let us know how you feel about the podcast and other topics you'd be interested in hearing in. Hi everyone, welcome back to the podcast. I'm your host, Gloria, and this is my co-host, Yan Shan. So today we're going to be doing a book review episode. So we're going to be reviewing the book, The Midnight Library by Matt Haig, and the general subtopic is should we have regrets in life? So for those of you who have not read the book, we're going to do a quick summary of the book and then talk about our thoughts and then uh, talk about the themes that are discussed in the book and our feelings about it. So hopefully this will be interesting to you. Yeah, so um, The Midnight Library was like a pretty big thing when it came out and it was like quite a trendy book to read. I mean, I guess it still is. I may see what, what did it win. Well, I don't see anything that won, but it wasn't like number one. Sunday Times Best and all that. So basically, it's about this um girl called Nora who's like very very talented. So I, um, I guess there'll be spoilers in this book review because yes. I think it's quite hard to avoid it. So <laughs> Nora, um, so the book starts with like Nora wanting to die because she feels like she's thrown away most of her life and her accomplishments and her talents, which are in like swimming. Um, and she also likes music. She was in a band, and she also has lost her job, which was like a pretty menial job at a bookshop. And her best, she also doesn't really have any friends, and she doesn't really talk to her family, and she doesn't have any relationships. And then her cat dies at the start of the book, and then she mm-hmm. just becomes really, really, really sad. And also, like people, she just doesn't feel needed. And then so, she says like quote unquote, living has become nothing but a chore. And then she kills herself. And then she enters the Midnight Library, which is like, um, which is like a place between heaven and hell. So it's like purgatory. And then it's, uh, yeah. Do you want to talk about like the what's in the library? Yeah. So as Yan Chan said, it's kind of like a place you enter between life and death. And in the Midnight Library, there's tons of books on the bookshelves, sort of like infinite books, um, which are all kind of like lives in parallel universes, which. It's all of your own life. So in the book, it would be Nora's life, and she is able to pick any book she wants before kind of going to death and deciding she wants to die. So she can have infinite amounts of lives that she can test. Like, what if she made a different choice in life? Because she she regrets so many choices she made. Right? Um, she felt like she didn't have any accomplishments, and then her job sucks, and her cat died because of her, and she thinks she failed to be a cat owner. So she can experience different types of lives, such as what if I actually pursue swimming? What if I stayed in the band with my brother? And what if my cat didn't die? Sort of like all these possibilities that she considered or to be a regret in her life, and she's able to experience all of those things through the Midnight Library. And then the general rule of the library is once you've picked a life that you think you can settle in, you can slowly ease into that life. And if it's the right one, then like you would, it would stick sort of like naturally. So you don't really need to try. Yeah. So I guess like the main theme of the book is um like we could start with I guess like the book of regrets because that's like the first thing that she encounters. It's like so so she's led around this library by her primary school teacher called Miss Librarian. Elm, who, mm, oh yeah, librarian who was like a mother figure to her and like who comforted her when her her father died so then she has this book of regrets and then i think the main theme is like whether you should even uh well, not really whether you should have regrets but like i guess it's like, it's like the things that you regret are they really worth regretting and like is it worth um like trying out a different life because i guess all of us have tried out have imagined what it would be like to have like a different life i think it's like a coming of age because it's, it was was interesting to me when i read it because as someone going through uni and like coming out of uni it's hard to decide what to do with my life and it's easy mm-hmm. it's it, it's really comforting to think that oh there might be it's like it's almost something that i would want to happen that that i'll, I'll be able to try on other things later on because like what if this choice is bad and then i regret it a lot for down the line 
Yeah, I remember you telling me because you were considering like what would your life be like if you went to a different university or you attended a different school. And to be honest, I think it's almost relevant to basically every human being on this planet because I think everyone considers, oh, what would my life be like if I made a if I made a different choice or if I went to a different place and pursued a different career, you know. Um, yeah, so I think it's relevant to a lot of people. And the thing is, in the book, like when Yenshan said the book of regrets that Nora looks at, that was actually the thickest book in the Midnight Library, specifically for her life, because she feels like she has so many regrets. But the point that the book makes is that once she started going through all of these what if versions of her life through the Midnight Library, the book of regrets actually shrinks over time because she realizes that even if she did have another life, like the outcome changes, but the regret doesn't really stay there for long because it's not really her fault. It's just that it happened in a way, but she blamed herself for it. So it's not necessarily her fault. So the book of regrets just shrank over time. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that can be applied to everyday life as well because people always regret because they didn't know what the outcome would have been like. Yeah. But the thing is, even if you manage to remove that specific regret by going through a different path, I feel like you will have another different set of regrets by going down that path because you didn't go to the path you went in this life. Yeah, and I think like it's easy to imagine that like the grass is green on the other side and the other paths yeah. are better. But it's well, like I guess the book, the part of the book is to show you that that there's none. Like like there's a quote which is like, oh, it's easy to imagine that there are easier paths, but there are no easy paths that are just paths. Okay, I guess you kind of get the vibe that the book is a bit, like, they have some, like, very long, rambly, profound passages, which is fine. So, like, it goes on, so it goes on to the conclusion that every second of every day we are entering a new universe and we spend so much time wishing our lives were different, comparing ourselves to other people and to other versions of ourselves, and really most lives contain certain degrees of good and bad. So, yeah, I think that's, like, that was really interesting to me because it was quite profound to realize that um that like the thing that you want is sometimes not always better Mm -hmm. and I think it's something that I'm realizing more as uh like especially in the past year even like because like you're stuck at home like I'm like oh what I really really want is to not be at home or is what I really really want is to everything to go back to normal so that I can go back to uni and see my friends but then like when I do get a chance to do that um then it's not as great as I remember it. And then if I think about times before when I had that, it was also not that great in the sense that like I was also wanting other things. So I think that was quite um, like profound. Yeah, I think that's a really good realization because we always hype up things that that's not actually happening in our lives, but when we actually get it, it doesn't turn out the way that we expect it to be so then your expectations not being met and then you end up with disappointment which is why i think that for me like i don't really have regrets that much in this life Mm -hmm. because i don't feel like there's a purpose for having regrets because if you have i feel like things happen for a reason and if you can't change it anyways there's no point in having regrets but to just live with what you have and like continue you know what i mean yeah yeah like there's this quote that I think about a lot which is I don't know if you know what's off Monsters and Men but it was my favorite band when I was like 14 because I was like edgy but anyway there's like a quote that's like, it's like <laughs> I have lots of there's lots of things that I regret but there's nothing that I would take back and I'm like yeah that's like so true and I think about it a lot even when I read this book because it's like that there are things that I regret not doing but I wouldn't do things differently I think yeah and I think that's fine to be honest like I think it's normal for people to have regrets in lives because that's just human nature but I think it's still important to know that the choices you made is based on so many different things so when you were placed in that situation you basically made the best choice you could have made and you know that's fine because every outcome leads to like good and bad as well and like going to this theme of what makes a good life I still think it's important that we you know, we have to say the ending because I think it's quite important to this specific theme. Um, so essentially, well, for me, I like this is my personal opinion. I felt like the book went through a lot of different lives of Nora. But essentially, in the end, it came to the point where she realized this, that she actually had a lot of opportunities in her root life. 
but she just failed to see it. So she essentially chose to be alive and stay content in her root life. Which, to be fair, I kind of could foresee it in the <laughs> beginning of the book because there, there was kind of no other way to end the book. Yeah. I don't know if you feel the same way. You yeah. feel the same way. I felt like it was a very bedtime story vibes because, like, for example, even the lives that she 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 went down, it was very much like running a theme. So, like, for example, if it was, like, her becoming an Olympic swimmer, that was like, oh, what if I become famous? Then, like, if she had a band, then, like, oh, what if I... It was also, what if I become famous, actually? In and, a different way. Yeah, and then it was, like, if... And then one of them was, like, what if she married her childhood um, sweetheart? Then that was, like, oh, what if I have, like, a, a perfect family? Or, like, what if I... Um, like be, like followed my like passion and became like a one of them where she was like a glacier scientist and did like really mm-hmm. extreme things so I think it like followed down it followed like very extreme paths and then the point of like going to all the branches was so that it would convene at the end where it was back to her root life so in that sense yeah you can kind of see it coming especially because like she goes down all these like and she she has different realizations along the way and then mm-hmm. she has lives which are very distinct and then you, you kind of know it's gonna come back, but I guess it's a bit like um, like it reminded me a lot of, of like watching Soul the the movie because the, Pixar. The, the Pix yeah the animated movie which won the Oscar mm-hmm. but anyway because it was about um, yeah also like wanting something really badly and then when you get it not wanting to let it go and then chasing it and then following it down yeah following your dream but then in the end realizing that what you wanted isn't actually what was good about the life which you had, and the, the life you had had lots of things which you were grateful for as well. Yeah, that you just end up not seeing because you just took it for granted, which is very common um, in life, I think. And yeah, I think just to bring up the point that I think everyone questions like what makes a good life and that's the theme we want to discuss for this book because I think it's quite important that we consider these questions. Otherwise, I feel like life just passes by in like a split second and you haven't had the time to really consider about what makes your life good you know what makes things and what makes your life something to be grateful for you know and I think bringing out like soul was a really good comparison because that sort of brings us to the point of just celebrating the ordinary in life because the thing Mm -hmm. is I feel like sometimes even for us like in architecture and I think anything in general I have this mindset a lot. It's like sometimes you just always wish that if you achieve this one thing, I don't know, like get a good grade, getting a first, getting honors, getting a distinction, whatever in life or winning this competition, you feel like if you just achieve this one thing, then you'll be really happy. But like whenever I actually Mm -hmm. achieve that specific goal that I set for myself, that happiness like vanishes in like a split second. And then you're suddenly set on focusing mm. on the next big thing. I feel like this is very prominent in like people's mm. lives, especially because I consider myself like a perfectionist. I just feel like I have to reach my goals and like do this one thing. But then when I actually get it, I'm just like, oh, okay. And then I just forget about it. I don't know yeah. if you feel the same way. Yeah, I definitely do. But I think even for goals which are much smaller, like for example, oh, if I lost like a few kg and then if I look good in this swimsuit, then I would be happy. But it's... It's, yeah, it's not really. Or even last time at school, I think I, I would have like dumb goals. Like, oh, if I um, get invited to this party or if I hang out with these people <laughs> and they ask me to go f- for stuff, which is so ridiculous. But like, if something like that happened, I'd be like, oh, then I'll be happy. And then I would feel like I fit in and a part of me would be like complete. And I feel like this is actually very relevant for when I was applying to unis because I feel like so much of my personality relied on my personality back then like relied on me being a mm. high achiever and good at yeah. school so then it was like oh if I if I got into this uni then like my life would be like perfect like there would be nothing more that I could ask for mm. yeah but I feel like having that mindset just basically means that you're always gonna be unhappy in a way because you're always gonna want to seek more and I think for me personally because I'm a very self-critical person like no matter how much I achieve like I I just know that I'll never reach a goal that I'm happy with. So Mm. the thing is, I'm not trying to bash goal setting because I think it's quite a helpful tool for like, say, certain projects or like, you know, in the work front, it's it's helpful. But with very personal goals, I just never felt like it was a healthy thing for me. You know what I mean? Like it could be healthy. But then 
a lot of times I think I abuse the use of goal setting and it would always be just be like an infinite ladder of goal climbing but never actually reaching a point where I'm actually satisfied with whatever like how I look or like my academic performance you know so I think so I think it's really important to go back to the point of just celebrating ordinary things in life because people want their lives to be great and then because of that they miss out on such the small things that happen in life you know it's like having a dinner with friends that's something worth being grateful for like being able to go on a run or doing yoga with um, your friends or just having a chat with your friends I just think these are all things we can be grateful for because it's also about having the privilege that to, like even having people you can talk to and having a healthy body to do exercise in, you know, like stuff like this just gets overlooked so much, but it's actually such a privilege to have that ability or, you know, having time to do that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true, but it's also, it's different from being ambitious because I like to think of myself as an ambitious person as well, but I think it's quite easy to like complicate uh, or to like confuse ambition and being uh, and perseverance with being um, like hard on yourself. Well, not really hard on yourself, but like when you when you're forced to miss out on things and and never really feeling happy. Like I feel like it's different from being ambitious and for like working hard from working hard. But I'm not sure how to distinguish the diff- the two parts. What do you mean? Like for example, like if I was happy with just small things then I would probably be all right like not going to uni and then getting a job here and like where which doesn't require like a uni degree and doesn't really challenge me but then like I don't know having a garden or something which I which is fine which I'm I'm not bashing having a garden but like (laughs) but like that being like yeah the goal in life and then yeah yeah like not having any goals in life in general like I feel like I would also be depressed in that scenario i i get what you're saying it's like sort of just being content with everything that comes and like not being really ambitious and like reaching for stuff i i feel like we're both in the category that we really strive and really ambitious and like kind of like really want to achieve more in life but i guess the way that i think about this is when i when i say like um being content with what you have is not really telling people to just be chill with whatever they have in life and like not do anything and just like relax i think Mm -hmm. it's more about recognizing the opportunities that are given to you in life and making the most out of it but Mm -hmm. not really bad disappointment that really affects yourself when things don't turn out the way you want to because you already tried your best it's sort of what i'm saying like because you because there's so many factors in life that you can't control so you can only be grateful for whatever happens in your life because that's just how it is like you can't control so many things but it's not just sit back and like let things unfold and not do anything because i think that's that's sort of crossing the boundary of just being lazy and not proactive um doing anything in your life yeah you know but yeah. I also think that um, there's also something about like chasing happiness in general or like the idea of chasing happiness and happiness being the end goal is also not really sustainable. And and it's it's fine. Like to, I mean, it's, it's great to be happy. But I also think that like recently I've, I've realized for myself at least that like not wanting to be happy all the time is more helpful. Like having lower standards of how I feel like I should be living and how I should... And who I, whose life I should be comparing myself to, I guess. No, yeah, I, I think it's definitely true because I think this is also sort of a thing where people make it seem like you have to be happy or that should be the thing you're chasing because, I don't know, like the meaning of life is to be happy or whatever. Like you, you, you should strive to be happy. Mm-hmm. But it's just not realistic or, I mean, kind of just impossible to be happy like at all times. That's just not how life works. And plus, if you were really happy all the time in life, I think that's a very sad life, to be honest. Like, you don't really experience anything. Well, it's not like saying that... It's not about saying, like, you saying happy when you're sad, but I'm just saying that if the, happiness is the only emotion that you feel, then it's a bland life. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't feel yeah. the other parts of life, and you don't get to have a full... Like, you don't have a grasp of how life is, and you don't get to compare different parts of your life where, say, you're happy or you're unhappy. And... I think this brings into the point of um, um, sort of like meditation teachings that I experienced when I went to a meditation camp. 
it's not really about striving for happiness, but it's more about remaining equanimous. So mm. equanimous is sort of like you're at a stage where it's neither like euphoria or very depressed. It's sort of at a stage where you're just being very calm and content with whatever happens to you. So that's like your default state of emotion. So it's not like you're very, very happy where you're like, oh my God, this is great. Or you're very, very sad because you you sort of know that things will change in a way. So you don't get overly excited when things good things happen or you don't get overly sad when bad things happen because you know they're all going to pass. So there's no point in being so happy or there's no point in being so sad. Mm. And I think that I think that makes more sense to me than wanting to be happy at all times because I don't think that's possible or sustainable. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think that's something that I've realized recently as well. Um, just through well being disappointed in adult life I guess like like starting <laughs> to be like uh, yeah and also like trying to like find small happinesses and cling on to that so I think like yeah. like related to that also would kind of be like um, the idea that in order to be happy also like a lot of it is just like mattering to a small group of people or like having a big impact on a, on a few people in life rather than like trying to be very famous or trying to be mm someone who like changes the world yeah the thing is like I, I think I also read a few articles on this but like they're saying people who are like emotionally healthy don't really strive to be famous because they mm. they kind of know their worth and just like being content with who they are um but yeah I, again I'm not bashing people who are famous because I think it's fine like being famous you know but um yeah I think I, I sort of agree with your point of like mattering to a small group of people like, because I feel like having, like, personal connection is, like, very important. And, like, that also brings me to, like, a point that I think is really important. That not everyone likes you because at the same time you can't like everyone. So I think it's just really important to just, like, listen to the opinions of those who matter to you. And really know you as a person. And I think that's sort of what really matters, you know. And as, as we mentioned in, like... <laughs> our previous episode of like friend like making friends and like friendships that's sort of how i think about it like i think just mattering to like a like a close knit group of people is what really matters to me because i know they know me and yeah i think that's what matters but yeah so in the book um nora kind of lacks this personal connection in a way cuz she feels very isolated in the beginning of the book and i just think it's important to point out that in some ways, I felt like she was very passive as a character. Like, she wasn't actively reaching out to people around her. Instead, she's just stuck thinking about things that happened in the past and um, why this relationship is, like, unfixable. And I don't mm. think that's very healthy. I think, for me at least, like, if there's something wrong, I think she should be more proactive in trying to, you know, smooth things out. And if it really doesn't work, then conclude that the relationship is over you know what I mean yeah I, I was actually gonna I was actually thinking of personal connection I think from the book in a different way where it was more like I mean I, I, I agree with your character study of Nora being a bit of like a I guess she's believable and I guess that's why she's relatable also because she's also like quite sad as a character which I guess is the point mm -hmm. of her but I think like how I thought about personal connection was like the conclusion that she came to at the end of the book where it was like oh like she it, it was like she saw what would have happened in the alternate futures if she hadn't existed in the lives of the people whom she's in now. So, for example, like, if she hadn't given her... If she did not collect, collect the medicine for her elderly neighbour, then the neighbour died, I think. And then if she... And then if she... Yeah, it's just, like, small things like that. Like, if she, if she didn't work at the bookshop, then the bookshop wouldn't exist, that kind of thing. And I felt mm -hmm. like that rate waited a lot to, like, this movie called It's a Wonderful Life, which is, like, a famous Christmas classic, which was also about a guy who is shown by a ghost what would have happened. It's kind of like based on Christmas, a Christmas carol. So yeah. shown by a ghost what would have happened if he had not existed. And then he sees like, oh, his, his wife being a spinster and then like people in the town not being prosperous and happy because he matters so much in their life. So I think it's just like realizing that even though you're not um, changing the world, you're still like changing the world for some people. And like that's mm. good enough. Yeah, that's sort of what I feel like because I think a lot of the times people always feel like their actions don't matter because mm. they're like, I'm just a small part in the world. That also brings me to, I'm just using veganism as an example, but 
like sometimes I remember people telling me that oh what changes is gonna make it's just one person like you're just doing one person's thing it's not gonna change the world and I'm like yes but at the same time like hearing you telling me that I still made a positive impact on you and like the people around me I still felt like that meant a lot to me because at least I'm making an impact in some way on the people around me even though it's not like on a very large scale so I think even just recognizing that and realizing that you do impact some people's lives if not a lot on certain people's lives I think it's already like a huge realization to have and recognizing that you do you're you're, you have worth and you're Mm -hmm. impacting other people and I think that's really important to keep in mind yeah I think this is a bit of a segue but also like realizing recently that actually I have like quite a lot of I would say like quote-unquote power like power over like people who are very close to me like my family and then that that like even for my grandparents and stuff like even just being around them and um talking to them is like making them so happy that it's well I think it's making them happy that it's worth doing anyway so it's like yeah yeah, it's like so, so nice to feel that small impact yeah exactly and it's also about realizing that the time you spend on with some people like means a lot to them so yeah it's a good it's a good realization to have and I guess that also brings us to the next point of how I feel like because you matter so much in some people's lives that I feel like suicide is just a very selfish thing to do. So I guess the next theme we can talk about is suicide and like depression and like sort of glamorizing that in Mm -hmm. books um, and literature because I felt like this was a good transition and I just felt like I know what uh, people who have depression or if they have suicidal thoughts would think because before I also sort of have those type of thoughts and it's also said in the book where she just feels like she's a nuisance in this world and she's not needed and it's just easier if she just disappeared and like she wouldn't be a problem anymore which I can totally see how that would make sense to a suicidal person but Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just speaking from a more normal or like mentally healthy point of perspective that I just feel like suicide is a very selfish thing to do especially like when we discuss that you have such a big impact on certain people in this world who probably like you or love you as a person that I just feel that if you actually commit suicide it's just gonna be such a devastating impact on the people who care for you that it's just kind of selfish you know but at the same time I do understand why the suicidal person would think that they're doing the world or the people around them a favor it's yeah. kind of conflicting in a way what do you think? i mean i think suicide i mean i don't claim to know much about how it feels <laughs> at all but i think that it's quite different for someone who is experiencing it so like even descriptions in the book where she was like oh she 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 thinks death is the absence of pain and so to her living is just so painful and it's so hard to go through and she mm. feels envious of like her dead cat because the cat is dead and then she she wants to be dead so i think mm. it's it does like well from what i've read about um like just people commenting on the book it does represent suicide in a sense that that's what people think when they want to commit suicide yeah and so i guess that's quite accurate and it's good of the author to like to put that in but I think what I disagreed with about the book was the fact that after she committed suicide and then she was given this opportunity to like redo her lives and find out the lives that she wanted, that it was seen, like the solution was just like, oh, your life is good already. Can't you see? And then, yeah, go on and be happy in your life. So I thought that was a bit You meant like it was too ending. shallow to kind of just end it that way you mean um i think so but also i think the more so that it made light of depression and suicidal thoughts because all that it took to solve it was her realizing that her life is great already yeah i think in some ways i i sort of agree with you the thing is as in if a depressed person or a suicidal person actually read this book I don't think it would be like a cure you know I think it's more like for people who I don't know might not be suffering from mental illnesses to like read the book and sort of appreciate their life of what they is 
to be fair, I think it does a pretty accurate description of like what a mental ill person, me- mentally ill person or suicidal person would think because I I mean I have a bit of previous like experience of like how that feels like and I know what it feels like to be in that position. So I think it's pretty uh, like quite accurate in the description of how she feels when she really wants to commit suicide. But yeah, I I totally understand that it just made it seem like such a not an easy way out, but it seems very straightforward to just um look at different lives and see how that's how it is and then it kind of resolves the problem. Um, especially when I guess in real life it's not that simple by just considering different parallel versions of your life and then realizing your life is great and then move on and be content with your root life. Um, it's definitely more complicated in real life. I mean, you really have to um actually seek out help and treatment, obviously, um, for people who are like experiencing mental illness. But I guess that's not really but I guess the book's point is still trying to make that you can still be happy with what you have. You know, it's just mm-hmm. very different um in real life, especially well, you can't experience parallel lives. I think but in the book obviously it's much it made much more of an impact to Nora because she actually got to experience those things. But That's true. the other th- yeah, but the other thing I think is really important to mention is that as in when you have a mental illness is really about overcoming it and not avoiding it in a way like you really have to face it head on and overcome the fears and insecurities you have which the book doesn't really talk about but I guess in a way it does because in the end the midnight library kind of collapses right I think in a way that's sort of her overcoming her regrets and fears and realizing that her life is worth living in a way but it's just very different to real life yeah that's true so I guess like but as someone who has a has gone through like counseling and trying to solve figure out solving the problems do you think there are some parallels to living out parallel lives so for example in your counseling sessions a lot of it is um based on a bit a lot of it is talking about your decisions in the past and why they happened and how it affected you and why you regret it so I guess kind Mm -hmm. of like kind of like living parallel lives as well like do you think that's a good parallel well it, well obviously it's, it's different because you don't actually consider what would happen if you made different choices i think it's more about recognizing why you made those choices and why the situation that happened isn't entirely your fault and you don't have full control over the situation so there's not much point in being sad and disappointed of the situation because you couldn't really control it. I think that was also the one thing Nora was experiencing in the book, that she was blaming herself for all the bad stuff that she's going through and, like, um, blaming herself, calling her- herself bad things. And, yeah, and I think she just blames herself a lot, which I can definitely relate to. So, yeah, in, in a way, it it makes sense to me. But it where counseling is not really about, like, experiencing different things. It's more about recognizing and seeing the full picture. Because I think Nora is very blinded in her situation. She only sees how she's the problem. And she doesn't see anything optimistic about, or anything good about her root life. Which is what's really blinding her. You know, yeah. and I think that's really important. To, to recognize that you're being blinded by yourself. So do you think the book is kind of, in a way, glamorizing suicide as a way out um well to be fair she did go back to living her life in the end so I guess it's not really a way out but I do think that it does paint the picture of suicide being a solution to Nora at least but also in the end she did even she did want she really did want to die and then she didn't die because Mm. she realized that life is worth living so I guess it's a bit different and but it's also not that I mean I, I, I think that's why it has like fable and bedtime story vibes because it's just such a fantastical story that because I, I was I was thinking about what makes a good book and I think a quite important element of it is having characters or having a story which like reveals something about human nature and I almost feel that because Nora's story was so straightforward and then it was like she wanted to commit suicide and then she didn't it it was it didn't really reveal much about 
nor as a character, and it didn't really teach me much about what human nature is like as well, because it was not really relatable to me, if that makes any sense. Yeah, I think kind of, I think with books like these, it's just more about, do you really, like, resonate with the main character's life story, and, you know, how they live? So yeah, I I do get it. Like, I think especially it might be a bit difficult for people who might have not experienced, like, very bad mental problems to, you know, like, actually understand what she's going through and why she wants to end her life. Um, But yeah, I think especially for some people, it might be a very straightforward story. Like, it's like somebody doesn't like their life. They realize that their life is actually great in different ways, but they just couldn't see it. I mean, you can kind of summarize that book in one sentence, right? But I think it's just... For people who do struggle with seeing the good things in life, they really have to go through a whole series of things and recognizing that it's still something worth living. So, yeah, in a way, I, I get where you're coming from. But Yeah, but yeah. I think something, like, for example, if I compared it to Seoul, it's, Seoul has, like, a, a, it's also a journey of realization and self-discovery, but every character is, like, very... Um, well thought out and like very engaging and then and also every character kind of has a goal which I guess Mm -hmm. is also not which is also part of what makes Nora realistic because she doesn't know what she wants to do and she doesn't know like that why she thinks her life sucks she just thinks her life sucks so it's also it 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 makes Nora as a character I think a bit um I wouldn't say an easy character to draw, but it's kind of like a like a like a very blank canvas character because she just she just like doesn't really know what she wants to do, she doesn't really like anything, and yet she's good at everything. Which is also a bit like, huh? How is she good at literally everything that she tries? <laughs> so, I think that was one of the problems I had with the book. Also, yeah, I I think it makes sense. I I, I sort of understand that she doesn't have a clear goal, but I feel like that's also sort of why that's why she's relatable in a way because a lot of people don't know what they want in life actually i i I sort of disagree with the fact that she's an easy character to paint because i think the ambiguity and what she wants makes it more difficult to sort of um determine her actions in different scenarios because what does she really like as a character but yeah i do agree with the fact that it's kind of weird that she doesn't really do much but she's apparently good at everything but I think that builds the foundation for the fact that that's why she can have so many different extreme versions of her life. So I guess that was the purpose of her being good at things. But yeah, that's a little bit weird. But um, well, we don't know. It, it could yeah. be possible. So yeah. and I think something else that you mentioned earlier also was that you think that Nora like doesn't. It's like a very passive character, right? So you said like she doesn't really like engage with other people. And I think that this these like helpless a bit distressed vibes also are a bit irritating <laughs> because but also but also I think that's part of of de- being depressed and like being suicidal probably is that you, you just feel like there's nothing you can do and every problem is so big and nothing you do would make a difference so I think I guess that makes sense in retrospect yeah you could think of it as annoying but I feel like in some way I think everyone is like that but probably not to everyone, probably in their heads. That's sort of what they're like. Like, they overthink things. They whine about things that are happening to them. And they're like, why is this happening to me? Why am I the one that has to go through all these hardships? So I think it's it's all right. Um, it's just yeah. you don't really show... I don't think people really show that side of themselves to other people. So I think it's all right. In a way, I think it just makes it more relatable because people go through it. So yeah, I think it's okay. But yeah, as as I mentioned previously, like I just think her isolation made her very blinded to the good things happening around her. So like even the good things around her can be transformed mm-hmm. into bad things. And I think mm-hmm. maybe this happens a lot also in like people around us because they're so blinded by like their their pain, their hardships, like the thing that you said like whining about things, complaining about things in their head. So it's very easy to be blinded about everything happening around you and just ruling everything out as bad that could potentially be a good thing which also i guess goes back to the whole glass half half full half empty thing it's just about perspective i think and also this 
makes me want to um make a point of being just being kind to yourself in a way like i know this phrase of self-kindness and self-love is kind of very saturated in social media nowadays which is not it's a good thing because i think it's a good term um but i just wanted to say that i think it's really important too because your mindset really dictates how you view life so like I feel like if Nora had a positive outlook on things that was happening in her life and not ruling things out as just bad, like, she wouldn't be searching for death as an escape, you know? But obviously, she was going through, like, probably mental illnesses and having suicidal thoughts. So it's kind of insensitive for me to say that. But I think as a normal person who might not be experiencing mental problems, I think it's a good way to say that for someone who might just be complaining about a lot of hardships they're facing and not really seeing the full picture of what's what's the good things actually happening in their life and things they should be grateful for. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah, I think that was part of the point of the book also, I guess. So I think that's mm. a good thing that was drawn out. That it was kind of like Yeah, like like for example, like Miss Elm says halfway through the book, I think she says like, Oh, like the mo- the thing that looks the most ordinary might end up being the thing that leads you to victory and that you have to keep going. So it's like, even if life seems to suck, you just have to keep going and persevering because life is not going to get better magically without you mm, putting in effort or trying to see the world differently. Yeah, it sounds really cliche in a way, but I mean, it's true, right? It's also like something I realized recently is also that, I mean, life is just a journey, right? Because you can't control what happens it's kind of like driving a car but you can't control where the car goes you can only just make the most out of the ride and try to have fun on the way because you can't control so many things you can control to a certain extent but there's so much that you can't control and everything is just like sort of like fate and coincidence everything coincidentally happening together so it's just mostly about making the most out of what happens in your life and there's no point in being i guess envious or jealous about other people's lives because they're probably also struggling in the same way. It's sort of like Nora being envious of her possible lives Mm -hmm. and thinking they're going to be great. But once you're in the other person's shoes, or in Nora's case, in her own shoes, but in another life, she realizes that it's also not as great as it seems to be on the outside. Because there's just so many things happening that, you know, can't be seen. It's sort of also people being really jealous of, or not really jealous, like envious of, pop stars or like being really famous and they think it's all great um and this is something i realized i think i really imagined it and i can just see so many potential things that probably will be bad and you see people commenting or saying that when people who are really rich complaining about things they're not happy about they're like oh but you're rich why are you complaining but it's just that you know everyone has their own problems and it's not that one thing is gonna fix it or if you just did this or if you just didn't do that then it would magically be different you know so it's just making the most out of again the ordinary and celebrating the ordinary things in life yeah and also um differentiating between regrets and then well like things that you would take back with so so it's like yeah yeah it's fine to regret something but there's no point in wishing you had done it differently and there's yeah. also a lot of value in like facing the regret head on and yeah. thinking about it in a with a with a yeah, in a good way. Like just to know that yeah, this is what that you hear and if you did something differently, something else would have done a lot of things would have gone differently. So Yeah. And I think that's a good point to also conclude, I feel like. Is that you can you can have regrets, but I think another point I wanna make is also overcoming being unhappy with it and not avoiding it um and just saying oh i'm not happy with it but i'm not going to do anything about it but really face it head on and like try to overcome your fears and like regrets and then after that i feel like then you can see how it was a blessing in disguise and how things could have gone i think it's very easy to to say it once you've overcome it like once you're in that moment you always feel like oh this was terrible i wish i didn't do this but just like give it time and like I think gradually you'll be able to overcome it and see that it was a good thing that happened in your life because a lot of bad things can just be turned into good things you know because it made you stronger or whatever in a way yeah yeah 
And the other thing I also wanted to say is that just to conclude with like better points also is that a, a very good reminder is to like appreciate life for what it is right now and just making the most out of the opportunities in your life because like we mentioned previously it's not about just uh, staying still and not doing anything about what's happening in life it's about also being proactive but not being disappointed of what you didn't have in life but just making the most out of the situation you're in the resources that was given to you and the opportunities you find yourself in and striving for the best with what you have in life um and the other thing is that your mindset also dictates how your life will turn out like whether it's a good or bad life because you decide how you view your life right and you're the one that's viewing it so i think your mindset is so important to dictating what makes a good life and what makes a bad life if that's possible but yeah you could be in a i guess conventionally what people think is a bad situation but still stay optimistic like with the glass half full approach and still making the most out of seemingly bad situation because i think a lot of success stories also about seemingly in a bad situation but making the most out of the things they have yeah that's sort of the points i want to conclude on yeah that was a good summary of the book it's a good book to be honest like even though i bash it sometimes I really did like reading it. I like it was like a real page turner. Like I actually really did want to finish it. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. I think because this is more about a book analysis, so we're gonna have to talk about the good points and the bad points of the book. But I think overall it was a it was a great book. I think I really enjoyed reading it. Again, obviously I could foresee the ending, but that doesn't take away the experience of me liking the book as a whole because I still really like the message and that I mean that formed mm. the basis of our conclusion so I really like the book and the the storyline and what Nora went through I think it's a good message to give out to people especially people who are um, coming of age and they're picking their career paths and I think it's just a good reminder to give to people um, that everything in life kind of happens for a reason and just being appreciative of what happens in life yeah so yeah all right Thank you so much for joining us for reviewing the Midnight Library. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.